Uh, hi, uh, what I'm going to do now is basically I'll try to explain how Wuwei works and uh, this Wuwei version is for uh, Macintosh, for OS 6 it supports uh, anything above 10.6 and you can try it even with some of the lower versions it may still work so I'm going to start Wuwei and I'll try to guide you through it and uh, I'll tell you basically which part does what so it's a very simple app you've got only one window where you have the license bit you have the help thing where only there is a link to the tutorial uh, this tutorial will be on this link and you've got the Skype link where you can always ask me for assistance and you've got these two selections and you've got this one camera recorder shot selection so I'll start with this one camera recorder shot what this means is uh, if, if this is on and if you select some files if I click on select files well that one is on I can I can go here and uh, and select, let's say, I'll select this few files and what happens is, uh, these few files are selected as normally, but you can you can see these two lines at the beginning and at the end uh, what this means is that uh, the following files are all recorded on one device that's the beginning of the list so you've got six files all recorded on one device so if I were to select more and more while this is on then these other files would be also part of the recorder groups so you see as one of the groups ends I've got the other group beginning and I've got all these files as members of the other group so you, you can imagine this like uh, like bins uh, in as the pluralized people will actually call them they're like camera bins where you select them in groups this is not essential with WooWiF actually this is not even a default operation so you, so you can do this later on once you get used to uh, the way it works but uh, uh, it is possible to group them by device and it uh, sometimes it works because uh, uh, it lowers the number of comparisons that the, the app needs to make to get the sync done so um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll just select some, some random shots I will uh, reset the selection I'll go in the options so in the options you've got composition export settings uh, basically you can, you can leave this blank uh, you don't have to do nothing with this uh, you can also try with the default mode it will work in most of the situations and you've got this new option on, on Mac which is not available on Windows yet it says sacrifice accuracy and get sync so if you if you click this on then uh, what it will do is it will lower the threshold or of our algorithm and, uh, and it will basically make it uh, more sensitive uh, and it will increase the false positives as well so you can use this if you're really frustrated and if you want to get your sync anyway and, uh, and nothing else works okay and uh, you see there's one button here which is missing we have to select some files first uh, if, you, if, you, if you happen to select this one camera option and select lots of shots and click sync then it's not, it's not going to sync nothing because they're all part of the same group so you have to make sure this is off so I will select some shots without knowing which camera shot what because uh, Wuwef is completely camera agnostic in this mode and I'll just select like I don't know, randomly, a few shots like this. Uh, hopefully, some of them will sync. And I'll go on the on the default option and click the sync button. And once you click the sync button, it will take some time. Uh, it will probably take a long time if you've got lots of uh, files. Uh, be careful when you when you've got like files more than one hour and a half or two hours because I've seen that uh, on Windows, uh, if it goes over the 2.4 gigs. Uh, RAM usage then it's not going to work properly so so the maximum length of the file that we support now will be probably around one hour so let's see what it did with it the sync in progress uh, you can always take these shots download them from the internet uh, download some of the other apps like Pluralize try them um, and compare them and see what works best for you and uh, get the one you like but we will always provide the source footage when we do our tests so anyone else can, if they want, they can recreate the tests themselves. Okay, still syncing. I've got only code to do, so so it is a bit slow as a machine. Yeah, you can see I'm working on this machine. It will, it will finish it in a few seconds or so one minute. I just want to show you where it puts the XML files because lots of people were asking where the XML files go. Uh, now I was I was going before I I managed to do it by uh, putting them into within the app bundle, but uh, some people complained about it, so I changed it, and now now the synced uh, XML files result files will be placed on the desktop, hopefully. 
if you want to see what's going on now while it's doing this, you, you can do it yourself. If you if you go on Wave like this, and if we go and show the original option, I'm just going to show you something which is really useful. And if we go to show package, we can go to the log file, and we can see the log file real time, and see what's going on here. See, so we can we can see that it's a uh, it's stuck at this point. Which, if you ask me, if you send a log file, if sometimes you've got any issues with it, you can send me a log file, and I'll be able to check the log file and see what's going on with it. So now, basically, it went to the stage where it's comparing all of them. It created all the maxes. These are special points which I've uh, designed an algorithm to recognize, and, and then they're all compared to each other, and if some of them matches, then the synchronization is done. Of course, it's a bit more complex than that, but you can, if you want to know more about it, you can always ask me on, on Skype. <coughs> you can see where the temp file changed. You see now it's it's doing it's doing the comparisons. So we have the first file, the second with the first file, it starts from zero, of course, and we've got the second with the second file, the third file, and fourth, and so on, and uh, and once it finishes, then uh, it will. We will see whether it did any syncing, but you can you can actually see where the the app is heading, you know, and and it's so easy to to find out if there is a problem and where the problem comes from. Especially if you've got like thousands of files, uh, maybe not thousands, but let's say like hundreds of files, and if you want to know, or like you wait two hours and you want to know what's happening with it, you can go into the log file and you can check where the the app is going, and if you've got any issues, you can send me the log file and, and we can work it together. So we can see now again the log file, refresh it and see what's what's in it. Yep. See a few um, only few left, so it's the ten file that's going, so it's another five files left. And uh, imagine I'm I'm doing this while I'm recording this with uh, QuickTime and uh, and it's only called to do up and I'm seeking in the same time. On an i7, this will be done in a minute. Uh, okay, so what happened now is uh, we've got this uh, this folder automatically open for us, which is uh, called synced, and this is a folder that's on the it should be on the desktop. Let's see. See that's on the desktop and it's called synced. Uh, so in this folder, we'll find this few files. We'll find this file for uh, FCP. Uh, the FCPX, Final Cut Pro X, and we've got a file, a file for normal FCP, the Premiere Pro file, and uh, you can just select which one you want to open and you can open it. Uh, the, the app uh, in, in the background shows the done screen, and you can just exit from the app. And I'll close the lock file. So what I'm going to do now is I'll try to open uh, the Final Cut Pro and see whether that, that one opens the XML so you can see what, what happened with the syncing. So, wait a second, it will take a while to open the Final Cut Pro all these things running, especially the screen recorder. Uh, it's opening, yeah. As I said, this file is openly available on the internet, all these files. You can download them yourself, check them out, see what's in it. Check all the other apps like Pluralize on it and see which one works best for you. Wait a second now until it imports this. I've got only this central portion of the screen on the screen recording. Because if, if I were to select the whole screen, it wouldn't, it would stall after two minutes. But I think we'll be able to see the, the synced files even with this portion of the screen. Come on. Uh, let's see. Yep, then we have 24. So, so what it did, I'll try to... Yep, that's it. So, so these are the three shots it made. That's the first one. Third one. Yeah, you 
can see you can see what happened with this one I will try to <laughs> help you see the actual so so if we were to zoom onto this audio files you can all the waveforms you can see that they're perfectly in sync else uh, so it, so it found basically it found three matches three pairs of files which are in match sometimes there may be like five files in one sequence but it's uh, one of the most powerful things that the Wu Wave does, which I've worked on it for a few months, is uh, it groups files within time and space. So if you have like two cameras shooting a dialogue of two people talking on, on a bench on the street, for example, and if you've got like that, you've got 30 shots from all around the place uh, uh, defining that scene, and then you go somewhere else and you shoot something else which is different, it's not going to put all these files in one sequence and uh, sync them like that. What it will do is, it will sync them, but it will also divide them in meaningful sequences, like meaningful sequences in time,